Hey, Dutch Tommy here coming to you live from uh, Osaka, Japan. I had a long night and had some uh, interesting things that I wanted to share. I realized that uh, issues and stuff in uh, my life, that love has always been the answer. Either loving yourself or learning to love your demons. No one wants to hear about learning, loving their demons, but the fact is, is that um, this week during uh, my work, one of our coworkers, someone that I'm working with, had extreme meltdowns and they had a really, really rough time of it. And, and I really feel bad for them, but while I'm watching them melt down and freak out and yell and scream, I realize that that's how I feel exactly on the inside at times. And I mean, like actually that same day that they were thinking, they were, they were doing it, I was feeling it. But I think because I'm a little bit older and have a little bit more uh, life experience that I didn't, you know, I don't melt down like that. So. I, I just wanted to say that I think that finding a way to love your demons and love yourself is really the way to go through that that love is the answer when you try to war on war you get more war when you cry try to war on drugs you get more drugs when you try to war on anything you get it and it's a law of attraction which I know sounds flaky but the fact is is that when you war on something you you lose but when you peace on it when you love on it when you focus on it it grows the rock recently said in a meme when you focus on you, you grow. When you focus on crap, crap grows. Think about that again. Read it again. I knew that guy out. Some, some, some big rock stuff like that. Um, but I found that the last couple of days I've been fighting internally to keep my focus on the good things, on growth and love and happiness. And uh, it's helped. My eyes are open to other avenues of love and joy. And I uh, have been shocked. You know, I, I had limited myself and cut myself off to everything except for one avenue. That was stupid. Stupid, but I'm stupid sometimes to happen. You know what I'm talking about? Like this hat. I, my hair was messy, so I grabbed the first hat that I had. You like my dreads, man? Eh? Love the answer. Yeah. All right, this is Dutch Tommy. Tan. Love is the answer. And no matter what happens, the real battleground is in your mind for your thoughts. Your thoughts control your feelings or your actually I've heard that but I think sometimes feelings control thoughts feelings urge specific thoughts and when those bad feelings whether in my case right now I'm, I'm 55 I'm going through like male menopause so my hormones are just everywhere man they're on off I'm super horny all or or super like disinterested I'm sleepy I'm outraged I'm angry I'm violent all of these emotions are just bouncing around and it's horrible man Women say, oh, you don't know what it's like to have the FPMS. Like, yeah, most men probably uh, experienced that when they were in their teens, because that's what it feels like. And then in your 50s, that midlife crisis thing, men wake up, their hormones kick on, they kick off, they kick on, they kick off, and they have this midlife crisis. I just walked, Dr. Dwayne Dyer said, um, it's not a crisis, it's a shift. You shift from wanting things in your life and accomplishments to wanting meaning and in my life I'm in that shift exactly and right now I'm working to um, put meaning into my life or at least find out what my meaning is and choosing my meaning um, I have pursued my father's dreams and visions and for, for who I should be as a person and his conservative viewpoint of where I should be in life and um, that was fucking horrible just straight up horrible it was the worst thing that I've ever done in my life was try to be someone that I'm not be something that I'm not and uh, I hope that no matter who you are you find you keep searching for who you are I searched for 50 years to try to find God only to realize that I wasn't really looking for God I was looking for my father's love and acceptance my parents love and acceptance and I never got it never will have it it's never gonna happen and I will probably never speak to them ever again um, they're in their 80s, so what do I got? 10 years to not talk to them? Eh, not a problem. Do I feel sorry for them? Yeah, because it's not my failure, it's theirs. I used to word it and use the phraseology of, I have failed to earn my father's love and respect, but you know, I just said that a minute. I got like a real, a painful twinge in my chest, a spike in my chest. Um, but the thing is, is that it's not my failure to earn their love. It's their failure to learn to love, accept me for who I am and see my glory. And the thing is, if they're different people and they just never will, that's okay too. 
you know, we just got this bad role, you know, got this bad generation. And, you know, I got with them as parents and they got with me and it was hard. So I think the way I look at it is we all toughed out a really difficult situation, uh, childhood together, and um, it's over. But they're kind of, I don't care where they're at, but I'm stuck on the fact that I was searching for God and really I was looking for my father's love and acceptance and respect. Now that, that I know that that's not the case, I am making a, a shift in my life to meaning and what I really want my meaning to be. So if you're a you know, man or a woman or, or, or whatever you self-identify as, if you're going through some kind of a transition and you're not alone, never give up. And you need to start focusing on the beautiful and wonderful and lovely things that you do have. The people who love and support you. The people who encourage you in your dreams. Don't give up and keep just focusing on just those people. Anybody who has a dissenting comment, a dissenting opinion, don't be angry at them. Don't focus on them. Give them zero energy. Just focus on the people who love you. Turn away and focus on those people that give you love and time and attention and, and help you feel happy. Because that's your meter. That's your compass. Feeling good is your compass. If you self-identify as a mountain, move the mountains. Be with mountains. If you self-identify as a Schwinn bicycle, 1968 blue steering ray with a banana seat and a banana rack on the back and, uh, you know, flat racing slick tires on the back, you should definitely go hang out with bicycles. Whatever it is you are, whatever it is you think you are, whatever it is you want to be, whatever it is you want to inspire or feel, stay with those things. Don't, don't stay stuck on the hate. Don't stay stuck on the lack. I was focused on the lack of God's love and connection. And 50 years, I toughed it out. I am a strong motherfucker. Strong. I am stronger than all of those issues. And you are too. You're stronger than you know. This is Dutch Tommy out. Have a wonderful day. Remember, I love my community. I love you guys. I love you. You are my family. And you're so important to me. Thank you for this chance to, to talk with you today. And uh, tomorrow, I promise, I'll look uh, a little more woken up and wear something nicer as a hat or, you know, whatever. Dutch time, you out. Ciao.